Good evening. We're going to call this up to the council meeting to order. At this time, we do have a quorum so we can conduct the city business. At this time, I'm going to ask Councilwoman Jackson if you'll be so kind to get up in the I'll be reading out of the council prayers by the Reverend T. Frank Matthews, chaplain of the City Council of Selma, Alabama. O oh God, our blessed Redeemer, who did us preside at the Council of the Blessed Apostles and has promised to be with those who gather together in thy name and presence, we call thy divine guidance upon this body of public service that through our efforts here we may render this city a more worthy place to live, worship Jesus Christ, and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let us turn to the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Madam Clerk. President Bowie. Present. Councilman Bowie. Present. Councilwoman Youngblood. Here. Councilwoman Jackson. Present. Councilwoman Benjamin. Here. Councilman Randolph. Councilman Lashore. Here. Councilwoman Thomas. Present. Councilman Johnson. Here. As stated before, we do have a form. The character trait of the month is responsibility. Knowing and knowing what is expected of me. At this time, Council Members, we have before you the regular agenda, December 17th. Uh, are there any questions at this time? Uh, Mr. President, yes, I would like to add something on the agenda. Um, I would like to add uh, several bicentennial uh, December 4th, 2020 okay. as an item. Okay, you can part of this up on your community development report. Okay, well, I'll just do that. Okay. Thank you. All right, at this time, the chairman will take a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. We have a motion to second. by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Youngblood, and Councilman Bowling. Roll call, Madam President. President Bowling. Yes. Councilman Bowling. Yes. Councilman Youngblood. Yes. yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Benjamin. Yes. Councilman Randolph. Councilman Lashore. Yes. Councilman Thomas. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yes. Okay, the agenda was approved. Uh, Councilman, <laughs> you have before you six items for the consent agenda. We talked at mid at the work session. Uh, consent <laughs> item number one is to approve a restaurant retail liquor license transfer for the same bar to Michelle, Michelle Pierce. At this time, council members, like I mentioned to you, we have to uh, spend the rules uh, in order to move forward with this item. And the, in order to vote on it tonight, it has to be unanimous. I'll move it with We have a motion on the floor by Councilman yes. Youngblood to suspend the rules. Do we have a second? Second, Councilman Bowling. This is to suspend the rules. Roll call, Madam Clerk. President Bowling. Yes. Councilman Bowling. Yes. Councilman Youngblood. Yes. Councilwoman Jackson. She's out. Councilwoman Benjamin. Yes. Councilman Randolph. Councilman Lashore. Yes. Councilwoman Thomas. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yes. Okay, that was the unanimous vote to suspend the rules. Um, Consent, I mean, consent item number one to approve the restaurant liquor license transfer from the same box to Michelle Pierce. Consent item number two to approve the asthma contract. Consent item number three to approve the Dallas County Hong Kong Association contract in the amount of $1,350. Consent item number four to approve, to approve a contract for Copeland Welding Company to install 64 stone cover for a total amount of $24,000. Um, 22,000 coming from the uh, improvement fund and 2,000 coming from the ward <coughs> discretionary fund. Consent item number five to approve the first invoice in amount of $6,148.75 for the fixed asset inventory company and consent item number six to approve resolution 105 1920 where the civil service decides to grant the last part a severe weapon preparing this tax holiday for the 2020 year as simply certain cover items from municipal sales tax and heaters tax during the period of beginning at 12.01 a.m. on Friday, February 21st, 2020, ending at 12 midnight on Sunday, February 23rd, 2020. At this 
assign the children the name of motion to approve the discretion. consent agenda. We have a motion on the floor by Councilwoman Lindbergh. Second. Do we have a second? Second is Councilman Jones. Any further discussion? Roll call, Madam Clerk. President Bowling? Yes. Councilman Bowling? Yes. Councilwoman Young? Yes. Councilwoman Jackson? Also, we give, uh, we bring our community together. Uh, December the 21st of 2019, we will be having our last uh, ward meeting, and also we will be talking about things that we have done in the past of that year. 
and moving yeah. forward. Also, we will be giving back to uh, some families that are needed for Christmas. We give all, all the time every year in my ward to support people that uh, need help for Christmas. Also, it would be at uh, Ward Chapel Church at 811 Philpott Avenue at 12 o'clock to 3. So we are asking all of the constituents that live in Ward 7 to come out and uh, to have our last meeting for this year. Also, I have another announcement to make. Um, we will, this is an event that I take part of with, uh, we have uh, some young ladies are a part of the Angel of Praise. They are dancing young ladies that have um, been traveling with me and Councilwoman Benjamin and some of the other council that we have program. And you know, Christmas time is, uh, they're gonna have a, a event at the convention center Saturday too at uh, on December the 21st of 2019 at 4 p.m. at the convention center. So I'm asking everyone that uh, would like to come out and enjoy and just enjoy Christmas, uh, bring your family out um, out to this program and everyone will, will love this, what they will see these young ladies will be doing for Christmas. And my next announcement is that this is coming to the end of the year. This is our last uh, council meeting. Um, for three years, uh, Keep Alabama Beautiful has been a part of the city of Selma. Um, we want Selma to be litter free, and uh, I will be coming before the, this is our last meeting. Hopefully, January, the first year, uh, beginning of 2020, I would like to uh, have uh, each council to, uh, we would, I would like to do a resolution where we make the city of Selma uh, Little, little free, where we can encourage our children and our adults about driving down the street throwing trash out. We want our city to be clean. That what makes uh, everything that uh, people want to come into a city that is little free, town will clean. So we're gonna, I'm gonna be asking each council to be a part of this uh, kickoff little free 2020. Thank you, Mr. President. On yesterday, um, Ward 4 had its 11th annual State of the Ward Address. <clears throat> and I want to thank so many of you all who attended. Councilwoman Thomas, Councilwoman Jackson, President Bowie. Thank you all for attending and, and being in, in Councilman Randolph was at work, but he also uh, was part of the support team. It took a lot to have put it together. I also want to thank our new assistant, Ms. Uh, Nikki Aaron Ellison. Ms. Ellison, thank you so much. You, uh, you have hit the ground running. Uh, you have the council chamber, chambers looking a little bit more cheerful. Um, thank you very, very much. We would not have done this without you. We appreciate all the work that you have done uh, thus far. Uh, working with nine personalities is no small feat. So we do appreciate it, uh, and we know you are well capable of it. Thank you all so much for that. Um, we honor also, in addition to this being the state of the water dress, we also honor outstanding citizens. <clears throat> and, and last night, I honored four with the highest award that you can receive an award for, and that is the Butterfly Award. Some of you all are aware that Selma is the butterfly capital of Alabama. I say it all the time. Uh, and uh, a news article said, said of Madam Butterfly, and I read it today, that it, she decided instead of talking about the negativity, she decided to focus on wildlife, the environment, and her favorite insect, which was the butterfly. So in 1989, the Selma City Council requested that Selma be named the butterfly, the butterfly capital of Alabama, and, and we were granted that. Thanks for some tugging from uh, Malaby breeding, last name breeding, breeding, thanks to her tugging. And so four citizens were uh, recognized on last night. One was Miss Sanika Smith for her thinking outside of the box. She's also the brand new owner of one of our new restaurants on Washington Street. It's called Sanika's Variety Cafe. Also, we recognized a parent in the community, Miss Keisha on the trip for being a friend to the children. Um, she has no children, 
uh, in the school system anymore. All of her kids have graduated, but she continues to be a friend to the children. We also recognize, and some of you know him from Facebook, from Selma's Bright Horizons, we recognize Matthew Raheem Smith III for being positively Selma. Everything he speaks is positively Selma. If you know that page, Selma's Bright Horizon, you know it to be true. And then we gave our humanitarian award to Pastor John Grayson, who feeds and clothes thousands of people per week, not per year, but per week. And we decided to give him, and th that's just one of the things he does, the many things that he does. And we decided to give him the humanitarian award on this year. We want to say, um, so several times journal for being present. I kind of left them out of something very important the last time. So let me acknowledge that the several times journal was present, and I do appreciate their present. I present, and I do appreciate the um, the great great editing of Mr. Adam Powell. And I sent you all some information on last night. Hopefully, you, you did receive that. And um, Mr. President, I had promised a date when I got a date for the nursing home. So when I get that date, what I'll have to do, since this is the last meeting, is to give you all that date through text messaging. I'll do that as soon as I can. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Any other comments from the Councilwoman Jones? Uh, I, left, I left off one. And I must say this because um, I would like to thank the coach and the athletes. They have held up to what they agreed to. Every month they are out here at uh, the Rec Block Park. They've been, they have not missed. And uh, these are athletes at uh, Medview School who have came out every Saturday of the month. Uh, it was my first time missing with them this month. Uh, we have went through the whole park. They have went through that whole park and they have been dedicated to keeping uh, Block Park clean. And I just want to thank this coach for good, great leadership of keeping Selma clean. <clears throat> it was Morgan Academy. Morgan, Morgan Academy. Morgan Academy. If you would, let me remind, uh, please speak into your mics. I'm going to see several texts that they did not give us in the radio. I'm not sure mine is. I'm going to. Councilman. Uh, Thanks, brother. I just want to give some love and thanks so much to this young lady here, who are out there and her daughter and the crew that they did uh, for keep Selma clean, clean Selma. I think that's the way they phrase it. But anyway, Ms. Hawk McGee, I see you sitting back there. I just can't go without saying thank you so much, you and the crew that you go out and do the cleaning that y'all do in Selma and don't charge anything. So I really appreciate that. I just want to say again, thank you, uh, Ms. Hawk McGee, you and your daughter and the rest of the crew that y'all do uh, for the citizens. Thank you, Council Members. For the citizens' request, Mr. Collins, Pitt Way III, My voice projects anyway, so I think I, I can, you guys can hear me regardless. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Good evening everybody. Good evening. So uh, there are some familiar faces out there, but those who don't know me, my name is Collins Cutaway III. I stand to you today as a partnership specialist with the United States Census Bureau of the U.S. Department of Commerce. I am excited to be able to address my people because I am a son of Selma, and I'm excited to be able to give back in the best way possible. Um, Councilwoman Youngblood talked about how 2020 is such a special year for Selma, but 2020 is also a special year because it's the time again where we all come together to be counted for our 2020 census. And for those who may not know what the 2020 census is, the 2020 census is a count, a population count that takes place every 10 years. It's been mandated by our United States Constitution that was started ever since 1890. The reason why that's so, the reason why it's so significant to be counted is for multiple, multiple reasons. But for the two main reasons that I like to make it plain why the census is so important, because it's important for money, 
and it's important for power. That's honestly the main two reasons why the census is important. There are multiple reasons, but it's going to definitely be for money and it's going to be for power. It's important for power because the census determines our congressional districts every 10 years as they are drawn. Once the census is complete go and going into 2021, uh, the new districting lines are completed. Now, we may or may not have heard uh, that Alabama may or may not possibly lose or gain, maybe gaining or losing a congressional district. Those results are will be determined based off of our census results. And the census is used for multiple uh, things in regards, to, uh, in regards to what our congressional leaders uh, have to do. And it also determines if we want to end up in the same district or however the districts may be uh, reapportioned. Additionally, with uh, there is funding available with the census. The uh, federal government has allocated $675 billion annually that goes out to the census. That's just at a minimum. And those are, that's funding that goes towards uh, nonprofit organizations, it goes towards uh, infrastructure, it goes towards the economy, it goes towards jobs creations, anything of that nature. Anytime, I know many of us, we're, we're, we have to dodge a lot of these potholes sometimes around the city. Lord knows I do. And uh, in the event after 2021, and if someone were to miss a pothole, then that, that, think about that and say, hmm, I wonder who did not do that census. Which is why it's so important that we want that we want everybody to participate in the census because whether or not you make whether or not you are if you are part of a nonprofit you know someone who's a part of a nonprofit we know someone who has a job we know someone who uh, we know someone who has to travel we know someone who uh, needs funding for government assistance we know someone who needs funding for Medicaid for Medicare. Uh, there's so many uh, valuable assets and funding that the census is laid out for. Now, I've provided each uh, council member up here uh, some important documents that I'm hoping that they would be able to share uh, with their constituents and also that they would also be able to in, uh, invite uh, me to be able to speak with all of you. And I'm looking forward to also being able to do the same, to speak with all of you on the importance of why we want to prepare for the census. Now, Selma did very well in 2010 uh, with about 71% participation rate. And we want to try to increase that uh, with 2020. Imagine with what all funding had been available on a federal basis with just 71%. Imagine how that could be if we got to 76% or if we got to 81% or we got to 91%. And the governor has done, a, she has done an excellent job. We're providing um, an unlimited amount of resources to go towards the census. Now we have a huge kickoff that I've been meeting with uh, Council uh, President Bowie and also uh, probate judge Jimmy Nunn together as we form our complete count committees. And this is where you all get involved. And this is where you come into play. A complete count committee are committees and organizations uh, that come together to mobilize for the census. See, I'm a federal employee, so I honestly, I can't really talk too much to the media or I can't really post anything on social media because of, uh, because of my, uh, my uh, I have to uphold the Constitution of the United States. But guess what, you can. You can say whatever you want about the census. You can post whatever you want about the census. All of these paperwork, everything that you want to say that you want to do, I can provide you, I provide you each of each, each one of those resources to be able to count, to be able to be counted for the census. And who is counted for the census? Every single resident that lives in your house. It doesn't matter if they're in a house, if they're in a college, if they're in a group home, if they're in a shelter, if they're homeless. The goal of the census is to count everyone once, only once, and in the right place. You're gonna be hearing that a lot more as we go into the 2020 year. Uh, starting in about mid-March, a lot of you will be receiving invitations in the mail to take your census because for the first time, the census is going online and your census will be available to be taken online or over the phone starting about mid-March, about March the 12th. It's in, it's in that schedule that I put in you guys' folders. And uh, uh, we'll send an invitation about three times to be able to take your census. If you do not respond to the census after the third time, the fourth time we will send you another invitation, but you'll get the paper mail. For those of us who will prefer to just have everything on paper because we just don't trust technology sometimes, that's perfectly okay. You can still mail out your census form. And in the event that you still don't do that, after
after that fourth time, we coming to see you. And we gonna keep coming to see you until we get you, we, until we encourage you and we urge you to take your senses, to fill out your senses, to call your friends. This is a community-wide effort. This is why it's important that we know our neighbors. This is why it's important that we check in with our friends, our families, to ensure that everyone is counted so that not only we prepare for 2020, we prepare for April 1st, which is Census Day, which I'm excited uh, to be working with Council uh, President Bowie and also Probate Judge Jimmy Nunn to, uh, so we can see what Selma and Dallas County has to offer when it comes to the 2020 Census. We're also working with the schools. So for those in the Selma City Schools and the Dallas County School Systems, you're gonna be hearing some things that your students are going to be hearing about the 2020 census about what it means to be counted why is the civic duty to be counted so i just want to encourage all of you to be on the lookout for the upcoming announcements as we go into the new year on what the uh, 2020 census is going to be doing especially here in selma because i want selma to create a huge huge showing this is my home i'm passionate about what happens here in selma i'm passionate about the outcome of selma because the outcome of the census can determine how well we thrive with the resources that we need and we know that many of us need resources and we know someone who needs these resources so the goal is to count everyone once only once and in the right place and with your help everybody's help we can be able to count everyone once only once and in the right place. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Next we have Ms. Cynthia Perkins, service for the school request. Ms. Perkins. Hey, Mr. President, as I pass the gavel back to you, um, I have been informed that we have one council member that has a, um, a sick child that they need to get to, and one is on lunch break. So if we can, right after citizen, that's not, that's, we have a full that, council. That was great. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. I don't think I need a mic. Uh, I'm here this afternoon to say great news to everyone here and everyone in the audience. Uh, on Saturday in the Christmas parade, I'm sure you all saw the big blue bus. Those of you who could not have missed the blue bus. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Dr. Avis Williams and uh, my federal program director, um, Raphael Simmons, to request funding for our mobile bus unit. What's the mobile bus unit? We have retuned um, an old school bus and we made it into a mobile classroom where we will go out into the communities and reach parents and students where they are. We will no longer ask them to come to me or the classroom because I do parent engagement. But we will go out to the parents and we need fundings to um, keep the bus going and sustained. So I'm here to ask each council member, cheers the season to each other, for donation. <laughs> <laughs> because our school, our district, our school district needs this. And, not, and it's not only just for Selma City Schools, it's for anybody in this district, in, this, in, in Dallas County, whomever. We're going to do outreach to our parents to help make them stronger parents so that students can be stronger also. So on that behalf, I won't hold you long. Are there any questions about the questions questions for Mr. Perkins? Councilman Lasso. I just want to mention the parent university is a good concept. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The parent university is a good concept. It allows parents to be a part of their children's education. The education of our children is paramount in itself. Parents do need to be involved. And I'm going to ask my colleagues to know what they can. We need to dig into their discretion. Because it's an old bus that uh -huh. was retooled, but uh -huh. there are other items that you want to make it 
uh, technically savvy with the tablets, laptops, uh, Wi-Fi, the whole gamut. Yeah, we have some things that we need to put on the bus that I can't purchase with federal funds. I understand. And so we want to make it real classroom cozy for the parents and the students as well. Uh, we also will be collaborating with our partners in the community, uh, city government, uh, health, health, uh, health uh, areas. Uh, uh, Collins over there with the census. You know what we would do is we would park that bus, and you all are welcome to come on the bus and teach a class. We want to do something on what you do every day here. So we want to educate the parents and oh, children. Listen, I, I was at last week. I was at the meeting, and Dr. Williams was there. So excited! I said, "Oh, I'm going to be there." Well, I'm that she welcomed people coming to her and come volunteering. Right. Uh, is this way? No, no, this isn't the one. There's another one that y'all have two for we, teachers. We have, we have two for teachers to 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 self um you know, self pamper. That is oh, that's before, before they have a nervous breakdown. That, that's that's to go time. out and take a break. And that's those are my words, not hers. Um, I call it a respite room. No, that's the respite room, but people come and watch the babies while the teachers get a break. Right, we would love for you. It's called um, just, just relieving the students for a uh, It's like uh, duty free lunch is what it's called. Duty right, free lunch. So right. you can come in and be brave enough, Sheriff Grantham, to, to sit and watch those children while they eat and give the teachers a chance to go to the to the uh, relaxation room, is what I call it. Yeah, restaurant room. But there's a second bus that we have also, and it is it's painted neon green like Regions Bank. So you will be seeing two buses. The blue bus will be strictly for parent training, student training, educating, uh, and the green bus is a will be a greenhouse. And all of the the retooling of these buses have been done by our students in the CT Tech department. So we're training the students how to put benches on, how to weld different things. So we're collaborating with them to as well to make this project. Oh, well, how, how, what do you know what the cost is going to be? And um, because it may be that that in addition to we don't have a whole lot of money, we pay. And um, what, but it may be that we can do some, and it may be that in addition to that, we may be able to donate some things, do some in kind of things, contact other places that we know that can do some donations, uh, laptops, you know, uh, notebooks, and things like that. That would be perfect. That would be perfect. So um, we're just here, and like we would like to kick it off in the top of the year. In 20, 2020 uh -huh. is our goal to roll it out, but we still have some more things that we need to do on that bus. But whatever you can give, um, no item, no amount is too small and no amount is too large. And I know we're all financially strapped, but um, whatever donation you can give, we would appreciate okay. it. And we will use it very uh, wisely with our, without spending them. Okay. But you know, and, questions for this purpose? You know, of Thank you. Thank you all for letting me speak. Thank you. We have a description of the fund that's been passed around. At this time, I know Councilman Randolph, you're on lunch break, and I know uh, Councilwoman Jackson, um, child's at home ill. Hope you get done soon. And, huh? Oh, all right. At this time, we are going to make the selection for our next police chief. Uh, uh, let me thank the committee for the process, uh, Councilwoman Youngblood, also Councilwoman Thomas, and also Councilwoman Benjamin for sitting in. I uh, think it was a great process. And uh, Councilwoman Shore, um, all three candidates did an excellent job. But at this time, it's time for us to move forward with our next chief, Councilwoman Benjamin. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I would, um, well, let me say this before. I'm, I'm going to make a motion, but let me just say this. I, I do appreciate the process. Thank you. I do appreciate the process. Uh, I really, really uh, like the setup this time. So thank you for the work that you have done, Councilwoman Thomas, Councilwoman Youngblood, Council, uh, President Bowie, uh, for setting this up. We appreciate all six candidates. 
that came before the council. Um, my um, recommendation and my motion is going to be the same uh, as the person I voted for uh, not long ago. Um, we, we've tried a lot of things and we've tried a lot of people from different places and we have someone among us in the ranks uh, who can handle this and who is more, uh, more than capable of doing this job. Um, I sat in, as the president said, on all of the all of the interview during the interview um, sessions, and I appreciate the candidates. But um, my recommendation, my motion, in just a second, is going to be uh, for Lieutenant Kenton Fulford, uh, someone who is here. I don't believe he's about to leave Selma, Alabama, for any reason. I don't think he and his family are going to pack up. Uh, and leave. He is a he is a member of Ward Four, right around the corner, and I think they're going to stay there for a while. So I don't. They have a vested interest in this community. Uh, I I have talked to that peer review is very important to me. Peer review is very important. I talked to a lot of his peers, a lot of his peers, and and, and, and it is resounding that they all are saying that they they, they may have this to say or this to say or this to say, but they all are saying he is the one. Not one that I speak with, uh, and some came to me, not one that I speak with saying that he is not the one. So I feel like uh, this particular candidate is going to bring unity within the PD. So we need that. That's one of the things we need, unity within the PD. Who is going to bring the PD together, okay? The other thing that we need is someone who is going to build relationships in the community. We always say, you know, people don't like to talk to the PD or people don't trust the PD. Who is going to help build public trust? What person is going to help build that public trust? All right, that's the other thing. Unity in the PD and then public trust is another thing, okay? And so, Mr. President, with that being said, and I'm not saying that I'm done speaking, but with that being said, I'd like to make a motion uh, that we appoint Lieutenant Kenta Fulford as our new Selma Chief of Police. Do we have a second? I second. We have a second. I second. Hello, we have a motion on the floor by Councilwoman Benjamin Saka. Councilwoman Youngblood, now we're open for discussion. The process that you have to put in place was a good process. The final process was to make all three, the final three candidates available to this council. All the FLAs that my colleague bestowed on the council, I can say, could be bestowed on all six candidates. All six of those candidates possess the same qualities. I think it would be unjust for us to nominate one person rather than make all three of those families available for a vote by this council. I just want to follow up on that. Mr. President, I have a right to this motion. Nothing was put in place to say that we were going to do anything individual by name. So I have a right to this motion that is on the floor for discussion. Mr. President, that's not true. Councilman, it's your second time. You, 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 you outlined the process. You outlined the three top candidates out of that group will be made available to this council for the vote. And I do think it would be more justice to those candidates not to accept any nomination from any one person but make their names available to this entire council. Mr. Uh, President, you put that process in place. Mr. President, you did make the three candidates available. We all were there at the public meeting. All three candidates were made available to the public. If you were there, they were made available to you. If you were not, some people went live and you could watch it on video. You did, and you followed through. I appreciate it, and my motion is on the floor. I said to the council, not to the other Mr. President, to this council. And it was made to the made council as the well. three founders will be made available to this council. Okay. Councilwoman Jackson. I think Councilwoman was first. It doesn't matter, you okay. can go ahead. I just want to say this is the same thing that happened with the fire chief. There was a motion on the floor, there was a unanimous vote, and so we didn't have to go to a, a, a second motion. And so um, I'm staying, though my baby's at urgent care with 102 temperature with my husband, and so we've had enough time going over this. Right. 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 
Councilwoman yes. Thomas? Yes. And Councilwoman. This pub, this public, uh, this public safety uh, committee. We we had uh, six candidates, and we uh, we had we heard from all six candidates. We had their resume. We looked at all resume, and we we chose was the three candidates that would be the best for the city of Selma. Everybody had an opportunity to come and hear this. It was open, and and uh, we we put a lot of time into this. We, we focus on, and it, it's not about who we like, it's what's best for the city of Selma. Right. And that's what Selma needs. Right. We need someone that's gonna build our police department up and gonna relate to the community. Mm -hmm. We need somebody that's, that, that, that stays in the community, gonna be able to connect with the police department, make this city where we need to be at. And uh, I'm glad I serve on this public safety. And uh, I think we did some, Right decision. So that's all I got to say. Um, you know, I was hoping to not, you know, to not have to to, to say all this because, as Councilwoman Benjamin said, every every um, candidate was made all all, all public. All, all the meetings were um, available too the council members. We had a meeting group for the top three candidates that all of the uh, community members were notified about or were, were it was publicized and they were um, certainly had the opportunity to come and meet with the candidates. Um, every single council member could have done, should have done their due diligence. And as far as I know, did. As for me, I called references, even though I knew the ones that were from here. Um, and one of the one of the um, one of the people who were applicants stated in the interview that the police flatly did not want to get the job. <coughs> they would, would be disappointed if that, if that person were getting get the job. So, um, so anyway, that one of the things that, that we looked at was if they would be supported, if the, the applicant would be supported by the department. Um, so that's one of the things that I did was I called people I knew that knew the, knew the applicant. I called people that I, I that they had given us a reference. There were people who brought references and references sent by everybody and their second cousin. I'm talking about impressive people um, that, that, that carries a lot of weight. There were people who have law and enforcement experience out the wazoo. If somebody kidnapped me and hid me in the deepest, darkest jungle somewhere in the swamps <coughs> or God only knows where, I certainly would want that person helping find me. But in Selma, Alabama, right now, we need somebody who knows Selma, Alabama. We need somebody who has been here, who we know is going to be here. We have had, we have been hoodoo before. We have had people come and play like they live here or are going to live here who've had sleeping bags rolled up in their bathroom, who have, you know, had the wife and child come visit. But we, we need somebody who knows the people and who the police come and say, or when I ask them, yeah, that's who I want. Now, I've had people call and say, there's a certain person. If I'm out at, well, a certain part of the outskirts of town with my back against the wall, I'm gonna tell you who I want would, to come after me. So, that's what I went by. I, and I did not choose against anyone because let me tell you, of all of the people that came and apply 
Let me tell y'all something. That's an honor to every one of us sitting in this room. All six of those people who came to apply to lead the police department and all of the problems that we had, that's an honor to us that they wanted to help lead us into brighter days. But, and it would be an honor to me to have them serve all of us. So I have nothing ill to say about anyone, but there was just that, this, just that certain, <coughs> certain something that, that I had to know. And I prayed a lot about it. So that's just what I want to say. And I don't want to go into anything, you know, I don't want to go into all the, any of the other stuff, but that's just what I want to say about mine, being as happy you brought it up, Mr. LaShawn. And there was no, there was no conspiracy about anybody, because I'm going to tell you, I came 180 degrees from when I first went into it. So that's, that's where I came from and went to. Thank you very much. Councilman Silver and calling for the vote. You know, Mr. President, I, um, I'm going to record that the process was unfair from the process. If you recall, I told the Secretary John several weeks back that the fix was in. Apparently, that fix is going to play out tonight. I, too, sat in on all the interviews because I wanted to make a fair and impartial decision as a group of 87 police department. It wasn't the candidates that was so important to me, it was the people in the city of Salem that deserved the best candidate that was applying for the job. And if I was a candidate at this level, I would feel some indifference as to what has happened to me as a founder, that I was told that I would be presented to the entire Salem City Council for the decision being made by the entire Salem City Council. When Chief Graham was selected by this council, all nine members, it was a full-on conclusion, in my own opinion, that that was the right way to go. And the motion was made in the second and people voted on it. You cannot compare this situation. Chief Graham, in my own opinion, some can, some can. But if I was a candidate, I would feel slighted. And I would feel like I did nothing wrong. The accolades that my colleagues bestowed upon Lieutenant Captain Wolfram, in my humble opinion, all six of those candidates possess the same qualities. And any one of those six, in my humble opinion, would deserve some will. There were one candidate that, that has roots in seven other than Lieutenant Wolfram. And to be honest with you, she stood, and that's the issue. Do it head and shoulders off all of the five candidates. But for her not to be allowed to be voted on as a candidate for the chief police, I will hurt her this way. Mr. President, I, I tell you what, I'm going to send my second. Why don't we just call the roll and let people would say who they No, want. no, 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 no. no, no, no. Basically, if Lieutenant does not get the five votes, you're going to go to the next person anyway. Right. Oh, all right, sure. Roll call. Roll call. Let these folks go when I got to go. President Bowie. At this time, I'm going to have to abstain because I may be a conflict of interest. Councilman Bowie. Yes. Councilwoman Youngblood. Yes. Councilwoman Jackson. For all the reasons that my colleagues have conveyed earlier, that I'm just not in the mindset to convey at this time. Councilwoman Benjamin? Yes, and I'm ready to congratulate our new police chief. I'm ready, just ready. Councilman Randolph? I'm trying to steal my field vote, eh? I'm going to vote a big yes.
want to tell us? Before I vote, I'm going to say this. <laughs> I'm going to give my vote because I, I see this. Lieutenant Fufu is a community person. All right. For three years, I didn't know who he was, but I seen him. Right. I seen him in our city, in our community, driving through our ward. And, mm -hmm. and that's what we need, someone that cares about the city of Selma. And I must vote, yes, for someone that cares about the city of Selma. But it's not about me. It's about the city of Selma and making Selma safer. Right. It's not a one-person show. It's, it's going to have to be all of us working together. Amen. And I sure do appreciate everybody for coming out and supporting me. Thank you. Please, please, y'all work with the new chief. 
and try to make whatever difference it is we can get it taken care of. Um, I love the energy we got in here, and I, I feel good about this. And right now, I see y'all often, I believe y'all gonna be strong and bag the new chief up. So please, whatever the other, let's make it work, y'all.
in the state of Alabama, and I'm sure across the land, is required to annually fix the budget. When that budget falls to the crack and not imposed, then there is what we call a continuous revolution. And this is what we're operating on. There was a budget that was presented by law, by the mayor. It wasn't voted up, it wasn't voted down. There was some talk about this uh, work toward December 10th, and then we would have something to work on. I still say we got time to format a budget. Once again, I'm not knocking these, wa these wages, but I am about being about knowing what you're spending and ignoring how much money you've got. And I have told you down more than once simply because you have a million dollars on paper that don't mean it's in the bank. We got to get a budget so we can identify where our money is and what's going to be spent and what's not going to be spent. Okay, we got Councilman Benjamin, Councilman Thomas, and then Tom for the board. You, you asked uh, one of my questions, Mr. President, of, of Madam Treasurer, do we not have a budget? And, and we do, and, and you are operating from that, right? Correct. And um, are you able, are you capable of telling us what we have and what we don't have? I thought you were the treasurer with a degree. Yes, um, absolutely. Actually, I um, provide you every month what we have in the bank account. What we spend, what's on the Those are things you give us monthly. Monthly, yes. and I, and it's also included in the report that I have. And then, and then I also make sure if you have any questions or concerns, I'll be glad to ask them. But I do provide you the information, um, Councilmember Shaw, as to what our balances are and what we have and what we are spending. Well, what is so hard with us? I'm sorry, I still have, I still have a floor. Councilwoman. And 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 um, Madam Treasurer. You calculated this on what you saw inside the budget and what this council gave to you and voted on as the budget. September 30th, yes. right, on right. time. Did we vote for the budget on time? Right. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman Thomas, uh, Councilwoman Thomas, and Councilwoman Okay. I would like to say this to the panel. Uh, at the time, the last meeting we had when we were discussing about uh, the one-time bonus raise, I was very skeptical about it. When it comes to uh, the uh, citizen, uh, people that are working, um, I've been here three, going to my fourth term, and I have not seen uh, this, the workers getting a raise. And uh, I was skeptical because they're not moving. You know, when you give a bonus or something like that, just like a, a band, you put in a bandage, but you don't see them as the year on down, see them increase, their salary not increase. But you know, I had to do a little research, so I feel at this time that I looked in some things that where we as leaders were uh, told wrong. Uh, we've been talking about the Arbor play plan for a long time, since I've been up here. And when I did my research and talk with, uh, I had this way, because it was on my mind, this burden was on my heart, because it was Christmas time. And it was time that these, these workers and these police officers, the fire department, everybody was looking for, for, for a raise. And in our budget, we just can't jump up when we haven't had a layout showing each department what their salary is and what they should be moved up to. I come to find out that, uh, uh, Auburn play plan study has never moved forward because we have had three administrations, three people in our HR department that was supposed to have been working on this and, and they, haven't, they haven't moved because all three of them are gone. The last person that was in there working on this, uh, I, I talked personally to the lady that, that was having this. It was Sean Van Dyke. He left her dry with nothing. Nothing. This lady told yesterday because my, based on my decision that I'm making today is because of what was told. They don't have no information on no department where he left her. She had been calling him, calling him, trying to relate. So I said, we cannot play with these people live with him. So Based on me, whatever decision I make is this year because these people need, they need to be answered, they need this income. So President Bush, I, I, I slept on mine and I prayed about it. When I got through talking to that lady, I feel like our city with this RDF, or with Auburn Pay Plan study, 
we've been kind of a little duped a little bit on this because for three years it hadn't moved forward. Also, two oh, okay. yeah. Councilman uh, Johnson, one time Councilman Councilman Short, and also it's not much of a contrast because the county do the same thing for the last five years. We started with Judge Dallas. You know, I, I'm totally down with the employees. Uh, my only question I'd like to ask um, Ms. Wade, and just please help me with this here. Um, if by any chance that this do pass, that won't affect no kind of way or another getting employees coming back to work the first year. No, That's, sir. I'm good. That's good. No, 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 no,
got these five recruits, um, Darren Lee, Brandon Taylor Warren, uh, Joseph Brown, this Kendra Blake, and Jonathan Johnson right here. These are our five recruits who went off to the fire college. I want to say thank you to y'all, number one, for bringing Dylan Blaine, um, Noah Robinson, and Andrew Cannon. As they talk with them, they didn't know that we needed some more firemen in the fire department. So, um, without further ado, I'd like to say, uh, talk with y'all for a few for a few moments on some of the things that I spoke about during the graduation ceremony community service. Firefighters are the ones that we call on when we need help. They respond to that call for help without any recognition for a family base. We as firefighters never call ourselves a hero like you see in the movies or on TV these days. We respond to the call to complete the job task that is before us and return to our station boy on the next call that comes in. I've had a lot of people over the past 24 years of my service say thank you for your service and I've always responded back by saying thank you to my duty to serve this community. The fact of the matter is that firefighters perform the road deeds every day, whether we're on or off duty, we'll always answer the call for anyone who's in need of help to improve the quality of life of the citizens that we serve. Let's take a moment and look at what it means to serve as a firefighter in our community. There'll be times throughout our career as a firefighter that we'll face multiple types of calls and possible harm to structure fires, EMS calls, uh, protecting our community 24 7, 365 days a year. There'll be times where we'll have to work and not be able to be at our son's baseball game or attend our daughter's birthday party. There'll be times during the year we'll not be able to be at home for holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas. We must not let that deter us from what we signed up for in the first place. We signed up for helping an elderly patient get back on their two feet again and falling down the floor. We signed up for rescuing a child from a burning apartment complex. We signed up for rescuing someone's wife or husband trapped in a building. We signed up because we wanted to make a difference in our community. I challenge you today to make a difference in the lives of the citizens you meet in the course of your career as a firefighter and be a game changer for the betterment of your community. The community considers that the fire department is a pillar in their communities. A reliable source of security protecting them from unforeseen danger and hazards. Rightfully so, the firefighters have a mission statement that we abide by. Some are different from others, but ultimately we all have the same goal in mind. Right now I'm going to uh, tell you what the Southern Fire Department mission is. The Southern Fire Department mission is dedicated to providing rapid, reliable, and professional emergency service to the citizens of the city of Selma. We are committed to protecting the lives and property in our community. We will accomplish our mission through education, fire prevention, fire suppression, emergency, and non-emergency activities. We will actively participate in this community, striving to efficiently and effectively utilize all resources at our demand to meet the needs of the citizens we serve. To the new firefighters of the Southern Fire Department, I congratulate you on becoming the future firefighters for the city of Selma. To lead with passion, honor, and integrity, I sincerely hope that you will develop yourself to the education of the fire service, persevering to the hard times and weathering the storms that may come before you. Just remember, you can do anything you set your mind to, but it takes action, perseverance, and facing your fears. The three ordinary things that we often don't pay enough attention to, but which I believe are the drivers of all success, are hard work, perseverance, and basic honesty. Good luck to every one of you in your career as a firefighter here at the city of Selma. I'm proud of each and every one of you. Thank you.
Um, and so hopefully you spend some time here in Selma. Don't leave us so soon. You, you know, I know there's a ladder that you have to climb. Um, and you got some years, years, years ahead of you all. You, you look good. And, but don't leave us so soon. We just appreciate you. We'll do our best to, to make sure that you know that. Um, if, if you need to call us, get, get with the chief. He'll, 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 he knows how to contact us. The chief knows how to contact us. And we appreciate you even thinking about them even coming to serve in Selma, Alabama. We are very, very appreciative of each and every one of you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All eight of you, we're appreciative of you. Thank you. Thank you.
we are checking that truck off to make sure that it is operating correctly like it needs to. It's not just sitting out there in space. Uh, ladder three still needs to have repairs completed. Uh, and, and this was before I, I knew that, the, uh, that y'all were doing the amendments to the budget. Uh, that's one of my amendments that, that I need to do. Uh, that we need to get that ladder truck taken care of. Um, it's got a stabilizer, uh, hydraulic leak on it. Uh, it needs to be taken care of. And, and uh, I, I asked for uh, extra twenty thousand dollars, I believe, on that budget to to be added to that, so I could take care of that and some other fire truck issues that we've got going on in the park. Um, reserve six has no issues at this time. Staff vehicles. Um, the reserve 107 that we have, we need to put it in surplus, and we talked to Ms. Harrison about that process. Uh, the Hazmat 110, which is is, uh, is housed in our station, um, it's the responsibility of the Dallas County handlay to keep that truck uh, running, but it is housed in our station, and no issues will be going on right now. Our uh, fire train 102 uh, needs some major repairs. It is currently out of service. Um, that's a train vehicle. Um, I'd like to replace that with the 2007 GMC Envoy, uh, which is being used by the fire investigator's uh, vehicle. Uh, this again, I had put it in my budget that I'd like to add two um, vehicles. I added two uh, budget. One of them was to replace the uh, tag chip vehicle. The other one was to replace uh, the Envoy so we can have a fire investigator vehicle. Um, I just talked to you about 108, uh, the Batain G vehicle, uh, that being being uh, replaced. Um, the Fire Investigator 109 is, is the one I just talked to you about just a little while ago about switching it out with the train and the train vehicle. Uh, the system chief and the fire chief vehicle are fine, there's no problem with that. There were two accidents that involved city fire department vehicles uh, this year that had no injuries to either party. Uh, it was minor, minor incidents. Uh, that's been forwarded to Ms. Harrison and the mayor's office as well. Uh, current status of the fire station, uh, station two, uh, we've had difficulties uh, through the summer months uh, with the AC unit. Um, not sure exactly. Um, it might have just been because we just had an, an extreme summer month uh, like we did, so I'll have to reassess that. Uh, Station 3, I'm currently waiting on advantage concrete to set a definite date for the demolition and replacement of that concrete out front of the station. They advise that they can start as early as December 23rd, but depending on the scheduling and rain issues, it may be pushed back to December 31st. Uh, we have always had difficulties uh, with the AC units up there at Station 3 as well during the summer months. Uh, I think that's partly in the due because there's not any insulation up in the attic on that second floor. And uh, the type of uh, uh, ceiling it is, it's the, it's the uh, grid style type ceiling, so you know, 12 by 12 squares. Um, there's no insulation up above that, so I think if we had, uh, when we go through the year, reassess and give some quotes to see what, what we can do about possible to get some insulation put up there now and see what the hell out of that. The bathroom area uh, has some problems within the shower floor. Uh, it has caused a major damage to the air bathroom, which is directly below that area. Uh, involving the air pack equipment, computer and specialized equipment for uh, and equipment that we use to do repairs on our SEDs. Um, the water damage has been advised to Ms. Harrison and the mayor's office as well. I'm currently looking at getting quotes for the repairs on that. Um, station 4 has no issues and Station 5 has no issues. Councilman Mitchell? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, um, I, and that's, uh, you know, depending if it's, if it's going to be more than what's in my budget, then that's why I'll bring it back uh, in, in front of y'all uh, to... Half of that money is in the appropriate funds, Mr. Mm -hmm. 
some of it. Well, what we did um, last year for where there were savings in one area, you did a budget adjustment, and that's the same with the payment. It didn't get completed in the prior year, so we may have to come back and make that same request for approval for this year. Um, also, I think they had um, additional like 71,000 that was budgeted for 71,000 in uniforms. I have to get with Chief to see did, did y'all make those purchases last year or if you, if you didn't, we'd be making them all in this year because we may have some cushion to move some, some of that money around. So we'll, we'll have a one-on-one -on -one discussion then. I'll bring it back to you, whatever changes that Yeah, that's coming up on my update right here. <laughs> <laughs> you got a All right, we got a cover. Chief, uh, with the, the two vehicles that you were on report were in an accident, what, what is the insurance saying on those two vehicles? Uh, that's what I presented to Ms. Harrison, um, you know, so she can uh, present it to the insurance company for does it, does it say who's that problem in those two reports? Do we have a report on one? I don't have a report in front of me. I should have thought it to me. Okay, just because you have a report. Excuse me, he just presented the one involving the vehicle to me on today. Right, that's so, what we saw. So, I'll be forwarded to the that's the group of tail out of the white top. Yeah, I saw that all day. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, will you update us on the insurance report in January? At our, at our January meeting, if you have it back yourself. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. It's just minor repairs that need to be done to those vehicles. Oh, it's minor? Yes, ma'am. They were minor accidents. Oh, something we can fix. Right. Oh, okay. No. But. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I understand. It's as far as we're going to have to send that to the body shop. Right. 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 I'm not saying that. I can't do it now. You I know. know. I know. Got a minute. The fire investigator update. Uh, since implementation of the fire investigators in March of this year, they have investigated 34 structures fires and 18 car fires. The investigation division has closed cases on 16 of those structure fires as being accidental or no intent. There were seven structure fires that were undetermined due to there was major fire damage to those because you have major fire damage or something you can't. Uh, it's that one. Those that have major damage will be laid over case will stay open on it unless somebody brings more evidence. Uh, nine structure fires that were possible arson due to incendiary devices are still open and pending further evidence. If someone comes forward and says, I saw so and so do this, then that's where they're at with their cases. They went and investigated those, but Further more evidence that could be involved in that, so they can't close those cases on that. Uh, there was one structure fire that someone admitted to the arson. This individual was arrested at the time that had died, and the case had been closed on that. Uh, I, have, I have also utilized the fire investigators in fire inspection and training division of the department, so they're not only investigating fires, they're also assisting in other areas of the department due to their job description. I'm still trying to get an eye on the reporting uh, for them for the computer system uh, and also some hard copy reporting so they can uh, write their reports down when they have to do um, their IO reports on uh, incidents. Um, trying to get that done so they can do their job a little bit more efficiently than what's being done at the current moment. <coughs> Uh, the HR department and I have been interviewed four certified firefighters out of, out of those four interviewed, interviews. I have been able to successfully hire those three. Those three was here before you. They started on December 10th, and uh, the fourth candidate may start after the first of the year. 
I've also spoken with another individual that may be interested in coming back to the Southern Fire Department um, after the first year as well. Uh, he would need to go through what we call the reciprocity program uh, to get recertified if he's approved for rehire. So I'm still moving in the direction of hiring more and more individuals. Uh, at this time, I would like to uh, bring uh, Chief Edwards up front. He is, uh, was appointed by and married to be my assistant fire chief. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Just like to say it's been a pleasure to serve the city of Selma. I've been here for 19 years. And I don't see myself going anywhere. I want the best for the city of Selma and its citizens to be safe. All right. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. Did you have a question? I did, and I didn't want to take away from that presentation. I was kind of asking for you, and I didn't want to take away from any of that. You, you had said something about rehire, so I, I want to make sure he's finished. I mean, the council is finished. Uh, concerning this. Okay. So you had said something about the rehires at the first of the year. How many? How many did you say? Just one. Just there one. is there is one certified guy that, that graduated out of this same class and my recruits did. Um, he, he advised that he'd like to get some time to make a decision on what he wanted to do. So it may be after the first of the year before he makes that decision and, and comes forward, uh, he'll have to go back through you know, drug training and stuff like that to see. So. Um, the other guy, was a certified guy, but he let his certification lapse. So what happened with that is you had to go through the reciprocity, and basically you'll challenge uh, the test. You had to go through like a little three month, two month, three month class to uh, get recertified. So, so one reason. No, it's uh, Jacob Armstrong. He actually worked for us for about two and a half years, I believe. And uh, he left, and uh, he lives down in, in the Camden area. And uh, he showed interest in coming back to the fire department. And I, I sat down and spoke with him and, and told him the process he needed to go through in order to, uh, you know, get his recertification done. Excellent. 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 Uh, he did. Uh, uh, Mr. Van Zandt showed interest in, in uh, doing that, but I uh, went through the process with the City Hall and, and I could not rehire him. So. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Councilman Jones. Just one question. Uh, we don't have about to retire the last time soon we get this. Uh, maybe in the next six months, uh, or I have somebody right now that could be retiring as a uh, temporary cap. But we can rehire him back to part time if choose. I've got one more part time slot in the fire department. So. We don't want to lose no more. I don't want to lose no more. Not while you're at it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions for the chief? I'd like to applaud his efforts. Chief, yes. you've been doing Good job, what you said you were going to do when we uh, got you in this position. And uh, I really appreciate it. So, again, local guy in a local position. It's the right decision for you. I think it's the right decision for what we made today in the police department. I appreciate all your efforts, so thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, talk to you all for a minute. Uh, I'm going to ask you about some uh, testing procedures and things like that. Let me go through this first, and then I'll answer that question. Uh, currently, we need to get the battalion chief position back to an appointment. Uh, as this should be an appointed position and not a married. There are two positions available in the Selma Fire Department due to the fact that they were vacated by retirements from Battalion Chief Darnell Ross and Battalion Chief James Murphy. There are only two captains left in the department, which is Gabriel Sharp and Michael Pettis, <coughs> that are currently filling in the role as a shift commander because I don't, I don't have um, the detainee chief uh, position. 
I, I can't, I can't uh, get that position appointed. It's, it's uh, was brought to y'all, I think, from the previous chief. I've been in the testing position. I checked in with him with this. I talked with the town clerk that uh, he should be the consultant for us for our testing procedures. And uh, she has, she has uh, stated to me that there's not really a tested uh, per se uh, for the tank chief. It's more or less done on an interview process, almost the way the fire chief would have done it. So uh, you know, I guess at this time, we make that recommendation to move forward. I think, I'm sure. I think Mr. President, I think this will, this will be an easy do. The, uh, that was, uh, that was uh, a power the mayor gave up. Uh, I think, Chief, you just broke that subject with him and just let him take his power back. Are you talking about speaking to the mayor? Yeah. I have spoken with the mayor on that. Yeah, the mayor was on the way that he the cage. Am I correct? Say that one. The mayor was on the way that he was the cage. I want to say in the past. Chief, were you finished your thoughts, sir? Are you recommending, have you recommended that that appointment be made by the chief or by the mayor? What, what were you saying? 
the appointment, whoever has the appointing power of the detainee chief, it needs to be back to the appointment. If y'all give me an appointment, I'll make the appointment. Of course you will, Chief. Yeah, follow the recommendation of the chief to make the appointment for the county council. The way that I know this way it's always been done in the past is that it was a recommendation that was done by the fire chief to recommend the detainee chief. That's right. You're correct because our department took it and the department so, so, so you are correct that are, uh, but I wanted to know your train of thought. Were you saying uh, you're comfortable? I know you're capable of it, but are you comfortable with having that uh, appointment? Or were you saying something else? I want to make sure I know what you're saying. Let me go ahead and say this again. I'd like for that position to be taken out of the merited and then back to the point. Whoever it is that does the appointing of the detainee. I need those positions to be appointed. So whoever it is, whether it's the, tech, whether it's the council or whether it's the mayor that makes a decision on that appointment. I make a motion that we put the appointment powers, our appointment powers, the recognition of the chief to make that decision. We make the battalion chief and now an appointed position through the city council with the recommendation of the chief. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Now, Julie for Chief. That's what you recommend to us. You may. Right. You do. Roll call. President Bullitt? Yes. Councilman Bolden? Yes. Councilwoman Youngblood? Yes. Councilwoman Jackson? Councilwoman Benjamin? Yes. Councilman Randolph? Councilwoman Ashore? Yes, but I recommend that we do the resolution. We'll come back. We'll come back. So we do exactly what we do. Right. Councilwoman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Yes. Um, I've had a meeting with the, uh, the mayor's office um, discussing um, positions that, that I've got in the department that I need to be doing some temporary slots. Um, I spoke with HR and Mayor Melcher on trying to put forward a temporary position for the role of captain, lieutenant, and sergeant on a temporary basis, as we have always done in the past prior to exams. This will help to alleviate some of the 48-hour holdover issue, but, but I was advised that it would be best to give the exams and have an eligibility roster created. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Who would, who would give the exams? Say again. Who would give the exams? Uh, the HR would give the exam. The, the fire department doesn't give the exam. It has to stay. But I mean, don't you have to be certified with a proctor and all that? Uh, yeah, I would exam? assume that you would be a proctor, and the assessors would also be involved in, in the whole process of the exam. And you want somebody to be objective and not subjective in the process of getting the exam? I mean, do you have anyone? I mean, if we don't have. Anyone here for the HR? Could we outsource it? No. Uh, well, Diane Clark used to be consulted for when we did our sergeant exam, so you know that's what I would, I would suggest that there would be some type of consultant firm that the city of Selma could possibly do the do the exams. I know that. I mean, the police department they also. Outsource it, have someone come in and give, mm -hmm. give a test, right? What it does is it just takes us out out of the uh, the uh, improprieties and right. The perception of it, make sure it's clean. Yeah. Do you have anybody? I mean, can you just bring us back a list? Oh. I will do that. I've got uh, uh, Ms. Clark's phone number, and I'll contact her. And, and also, uh, there's another lady I believe she was over in uh, the Phoenix City area. Somebody we can uh, try to consult with on this. Well, can you bring get that information, bring it back to the first of the first Yes, because I need to get these as soon as possible. Um, as I'm hiring in, I've got to move the individuals up in order to fill the slots that we've got, and also to get Station Five open back up. Thomas, <laughs> give it to me. Give it to me. I'm on the edge. Chief, you said that, uh, uh, do we have, uh, I'm saying, who are we having in here 
active role in the HR department making these decisions for you. All I know is I sat down with the mayor and Ms. Sabrina Simmons about the uh, about the exams uh, and the positions that need to be done uh, within the department. That's the department of the HR. Oh, uh, okay. I believe uh, Chief Evans actually was in that same meeting with Angela. <coughs> I just get the recommendation to get it back to us, Chief. Okay, as I've told the city council before, this is not an easy fix. It'll take some time to create the personality that we're facing in the fire department. So, uh, without that, with, uh, with that, I would like to uh, follow this up by saying, um, in 2019, our fire calls are, are down. Uh, we actually had 572 calls this year from uh, January 1st to December 10th is what I did this on. Uh, and last year, 2018, we had 699 calls. So that's a difference of 127 less calls that we had this year uh, on that. I just want to get that little tidbit to y'all. That yeah. is the status of the fire department as we speak. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Continue to do a good job. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Could you give us a list of uh, everything that you had asked for uh, for the, uh, the fire department, things that you... The budget? Yeah, because I was looking in the budget at some of the things, and then you had required for some other things, and I wanted to uh, to see where they called quite a few things. Yes, ma'am. Right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Shop local people. Come on now. That's right. 
Uh, any local questions stores about this? Down. Okay. They put jerseys on the kids when they score. Madam Treasurer, back to this uh, half cent sales tax page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we went down, and you name a you name a small amount, but we did go down. What are the months that <coughs> counted thus far in comparison to um, 2018? Did that include October through something, or or stop at September 30th? Um, sales tax, uh -huh. half cent sales tax. Right. Okay. Go back to that page. I don't think I have my updated version. Okay, okay. I don't think I have my updated version. I think you said 98, 91. Uh-huh. Okay, and it's down by how much? 891. Okay, 891. Okay. And then the months included for 2019 thus far are? 90, for 2019 for November was 98,982. All the way up to November. Mm -hmm. Okay. So even though we're collecting, we're collecting more on the simplified use tax. We need to we need to shop, sell, or, shop local, or and or we need to be reporting our sales tax. Correctly, <laughs> exactly. Correctly, that we collect from people. Right. Mm -hmm. We need to report. All right. I say shop local. Both. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, and this is in reference to the John Fund. Total revenues year to date uh, for a general fund was two million three eighty five three sixty thirty five. Total expenses were two million one ninety one two thirty four twenty seven. Um, which means we, we spent under year to, we've been spending under the budget amount, projected budget projected amount in revenues by one hundred and ninety four thousand one twenty six. Yes. Um, and of course you have attached your payment register, uh, which shows all the spending from month for the month of November and also the um, bank account balances as of December 10th. Any questions? Well, yeah. well, the mm -hmm. I'll get you a copy of that. 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 Did you have an opportunity to look at the remaining gas tax? We said this was a five. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I, I got a list of things I want to go over mm -hmm. today. Um, First, first thing I want to talk about is fixed asset services. We had them to come down like last week, uh, I think, well, was like the first week in December, and then they did complete a lot. And Councilman LaShore had requested an update or have them to come here, but they weren't able to come and speak before us, but they did send us a report uh, with the status of the things that they had completed. And what we found is there were some locations that were demolished and non-existent, and there were some that they, for whatever reason, overlooked. So, and one of those were the Dinkins, one of one was the Dinkins pool. They also overlooked J.O. Chestnut, the safe room. So we had a discussion, I had a discussion, um, you know, expressing the concerns that we had that it could have been incomplete. It, it was incomplete in that the IT person initially, the IT, our IT um, director was out um, sick, and so they weren't able to do it that, during that time period. But what they said was that they would send the tags and try to get her to tag everything. But um, as I explained to them, that is next to public safety. That, was, that is one of the high cost high cost equipment, most expensive fixed assets that we have. So we really need them there to tag it, tag it properly. Um, and we recognize that that was on us, but there were a lot of things that they may have overlooked. So the, the project manager, uh, Amanda, stated that she was gonna get with her team and they were gonna try to rearrange for them to come back down and complete <coughs> and go back over those items. There were a few addresses like a location 
on old four-wheel road that I wasn't even familiar with. So in the process, I'm gonna take some time out today just to go and look at those sites, just to make sure, because I wanna make sure that when they come back again this time, nothing gets overlooked. And I want to make sure they, some locations like Memorial Stadium, Block Park, they said the same location, but I explained to her, though it's on the same campus, there are two different buildings, so we want to make sure that they check those buildings out. Same with the Wilson building. I didn't see it on the, on the list, but in the training building for the police department, not a, they said those were on the same campus, so I want to make sure that they get all that we have. There was um, some areas. I was going to ask what 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 on the road? What what they just for? said it was a storage place mm -hmm. on 301 or the road. Are you familiar with that? No, I don't know what would be to put the room on 301 or the road. But I will drive yeah. by there and down the way on. And Council, I will forward you a list of everything with the status on that, and then I'll let you know what the update is regarding it. Good, I want to commend Ms. Page for her due diligence and ensuring that our fixed asset is off to a successful start. Uh, I don't know what hiccups that, that the team that was from is it Minnesota uh, experienced while they was here. But I do think after they made the semi report to Ms. Wade, she was not, for lack of a better term, satisfied with what was being reported at some of those cross up was depicted in what she just shared with us. I think um, from this point on that Ms. Wade will be the um, contact person for the team to ensure that our fixed asset is put together and put together professionally and we can be assured that whatever assets that we have, it is what it is. Also too, uh, I would like Thank you, Ms. Wade, and also thank you, Councilman Shore, for chatting in the talk. Thank you, sir. So now I want to move on to our bond rating, which is our credit rating. I was contacted today by Stanley Ford's S&P, who uh, uh, formulates our credit rating. Um, and there were several things they said that they had had a meeting today with the mayor's office to answer some questions, but they also wanted to give, they were aware of the differences of opinion between the council and the mayor and wanted to give opportunity to hear both sides and, and have both sides answer some questions. And they forwarded me an email list of requested information and I will forward that information on to you guys as well so you'll be aware. Um, but it's more involved than just the financials. So they, I'm sure there are gonna be additional questions, but just the financial information that they were requesting from me was a copy of the 2018 audit, which is included if it's in draft form and it's incomplete. Um, on December 4th, I completed everything that was requested from the auditors and they were going back, looking at it, checking for errors, and they were gonna have it completed. So I'll follow up with them and just see if it's okay to send the previous draft copy to them instead until we get the final copy. Um, they wanted the most rec recent budget to actual, which will be the copy that you have in your package before you that I'm gonna send over. Bank statements for the major funds, um, <coughs> and that's gonna be basically general fund, uh, the water sewer projects. Ones that we have high dollar amount, we're doing a lot of spending, but I, I know general fund, we will make sure they have everything and anything else um, they'll request. Um, just to update you on the audit, as I said before, the audit for 2018 is in, in incompletion mode in the final stage, stages. We are way behind on the 2019 audit, so that's something that um, as soon as this is complete, I'm sure the mayor will and his staff will work to go ahead and secure a contract so we can move forward with getting this, this 2019 audit completed. Why are we so behind on, our, on the, the 2018 audit and we're just about to end the 2019? So what is the reason, I know the previous years they, we, we had, mm -hmm. 
But this, the following year, why is this so behind almost a year on the 2018? Well, there are several factors involved, but as you're aware, I was out for eight months. I know. But it's, but when I got back, I was told that it was like 80 to 85% complete. Well, we found out that wasn't the truth. So, be honestly, tell us how much percent of this audit of 2018 is now. Well, it's, it should be, at this point, as of today, it should be 95% complete. So, it be so we're, yeah, because we're waiting on the, them to, he sent it to the audit review department to check for errors, and um, I completed the management discussion and analysis, and they'll check those numbers to make sure those are correct, and then they'll publish it. So it should be 95%, but it's even though, you know, we have a, a still had the staff and had a county manager in the office, there are some things that that were just not their expertise. And audit involves gathering information from several departments and, and following up and ensuring that other department heads give you the information and responding to findings. So it's a lot of collective data that's involved. So that means that after they finish the 2018 audit, then you gotta gather up for right. all the information for the 2019. We gotta, we gotta go full speed ahead because we are way behind. Oh yeah. yeah. So. What other um, terms they use now? This way, I know it changes. E.g., a qualified and unqualified. I, um, I think it was um, unqualified. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, any questions about the audit before? Sheriff, is this the is this one of all the state uh, examples of public accounts? Uh, no, this is one of our, our, our independent auditors. Okay. okay. What, what, are we whatever, doing? what was the outcome, or do we know know anything about the one done by the we, examiner of public accounts? We, uh, we hadn't had an update, but when, from my understanding from the head examiner, they were um, trying to get everything done by the end of the year to give them of the new year. So they should be wrapping up right now. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. On the way, yes, sir. could you download me a hard copy of what they're asking us to give us a feedback on? Say it one more. Could you download me a hard copy of what they're asking us to give us a feedback on? For who? The, with the access? Send them. Oh, sure. I'm going to forward you all the information and I'm also asking them, request them to give them any information that they were asking the mayor in general so we all have, have full understanding. Yes, sir. I'll print it for you. Okay. Okay, so um, also just to make you aware, um, tomorrow I will be meeting with. Dallas County um, regarding the the EFLA EA law enforcement grant. Um, we, well, he's not here. Yes. Chief King, yeah, just to make sure they want to make sure everybody's on the same page in terms of what's compliance, getting the money drawn down, making sure we have the correct supporting documentation. Um, Chief Green asked me to attend. The, the meeting before I wasn't able to, but I was contacted by Judge Maggie Drake to um, attend and also Chief King to attend so we can make sure that we are um, fiscal, fiscally compliant. So that, that meeting is taking place tomorrow at 9 a.m. Yeah, we already spent some of that money out and it's so expensive. We have, we have some money for salaries that's been drawn, that's in the process being drawn now that, that Chief King submitted, I think on Friday. Uh -huh. Like overtime. Uh -huh, for overtime, for the weed and seed. And then also, um, as you're aware, Chief um, Robert Green ordered some cars. I can't remember how many, it's like eight, six. Six, six. I think it's about seven. 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 Okay, and so when I spoke with Chief King um, on Friday, he said that um, they anticipate those cars to be here by the first of the year. And we already paid for them in the, the last year's budget. And I have to pay off the check. You may have to, depending on how long it takes, you may have to avoid and reissue the check, but we've already covered that cost. So have we exhausted our $300,000? No, not yet. Okay, so could you 
you get on some mountain, as to what we have exhausted. Yes, I will. I would have to consult with Chief King to see what, what else besides those salaries, because I think the salary is probably more than about twenty thousand dollars and the two hundred and nine thousand for the car, so we hadn't made it. But I, I I'll verify those numbers. And is that included with all the equipment that Chief Green was talking about that has to go into into the cars too? Um, I don't think so because it ha it does have to be completely outfitted, and I think that some of that money is going to come out of their general fund budget. Okay. okay. Um, Ingenuity. That was the company in which Council voted and agreed to allow them to see how we're having cost savings for utilities and phone expenses, internet, et cetera. They did contact me on last Friday, on last Thursday. I was out on Friday, but I did get an email and did speak with Stephen Morris. And we are in the process of collecting the data that they need. They only want for one month to kind of review it and then move forward. So we should have that information somewhere by the end of the week to them, and then they'll move forward. And what in the final amount, which I think Council President Bowie that you were referring to, and President, I mean, Councilman Short, that you wanted to know the information on, was regarding the monies that were allocated out of the state gas tax last year um, for um, street repairs. We uh, initially, we, we always budget $15,000 annually, and I initially requested that we take it up to $110,000 which was going to be $100,000 for the street maintenance and then $10,000 for the lights. Of that $100,000 that was allocated in 2019 budget, only $14,200 was requested, and that was requested by Councilwoman um, Jane Thomas. And I have to apologize to you, Councilman LaShore, because when we initially set out and had a discussion about it, um, the conversation was about everybody giving a list and it being established on a need basis. So when, when you did come back, I just missed it. So I apologize to you, but I do have that. So if council wants to reallocate $100,000 again this year, which I think wouldn't be a bad idea, and we can afford that from the state gas tax, if you want to allocate an additional $100,000 for street, I think, um, you, you you know, we can vote on it, then you all decide how y'all want to allocate that amount. Well, President Bowie? Yes. Councilman Boleyn? Yes. Councilwoman Youngblood? Yes. Councilwoman Jackson? Councilwoman Benjamin? Yes. Councilman Randolph? Councilwoman Shaw? Yes. Councilwoman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Okay. All right. Motion passed. And this concludes my finance report. I, I got one other question. Okay. I need you to look at that, uh, that line item for tree cutting. Mm -hmm. There's a tree in my ward. It's in imminent danger to the public. Mm -hmm. And I need to know what's available so I can get some uh, BSR. I mean, where is that down there? It's going to rent down there. It's your pension. 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 Yeah, that was already part of that. Because yeah, 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 what's been happening yeah. is you all allocated the money and everything like this, it was on a need basis. So council people just been doing purchase orders and then we'll go through and um, get it. Because I don't want the whole board. Right. Yeah. 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 We already hold it. I appreciate you. Okay. Council yeah, President Bull, you still got Mr. McMillan? Because he came by now. Yeah. Okay, I told you to take yeah. care. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get that. Oh, one thing before I forget. Talk about the budget. Um, what I did was print out the budget that from 2019 that carried forward into 2020, the 2020 budget, so you all can have it again on file as the 2020 budget. Um, whenever you're ready to make those amendments, I know President Bula has just, and I had a discussion about trying to take those salaries as minimum wage, what that additional cost would that be, moving them up in phases. And there was something that he was trying
trying to consult with the attorney on a legal, from a legal standpoint on how to do that before we move forward. Uh, that was one thing, but any others, this list of recommendations are the uh, requests made by the department head during the budget process, and also a list of rec recommendations by council, by each department. And so if you would take, um, this is what Councilwoman Benjamin recorded, so if you take the opportunity to look this over, then whenever the finance department, I mean the finance committee wants to meet or move forward, then I can add this to um, amendment budget. Keep in mind, if this budget does not reflect the additional $5,000 that was brought back to your discretionary because there was an amendment to the budget. Amendments are made throughout the year. So once you all decide that you want to make an overall amendment, I will amend this budget and have one amendment due for all. with me and in the formal administration in the first year of this administration. The budget process always involved the treasurer because sometimes department heads with good intentions will come and request to council all these things that they need. But when you go back and you look at their budget individually, their budget performance report which explains how they're spending, the requests that they're asking don't necessarily match up. And what I mean by that is they may say they need equipment maintenance of increase of 50000 but in the past three years, their supplies, they've only been spending maybe 40% of their total supply, so they can afford to reduce that budget line and increase that and maybe add additional 23000 on requests from council. So, so that's why it's important, even if I wasn't here, to involve someone who's familiar with the budget process and knows how to kind of articulate what's going on and then explain that to the department heads as well as communicate it back to council. That's very Went up the roof. 
you know. So there, there's cause and effect, and I agree with you on that. We just have to be more cautious in our skin. Uh, thank you. We're going to move at January 6th. Uh, no, go ahead and uh, move forward there. Ms. Hamilton, you're a force. You just need to get that, uh, that cotton in the name. Yes. Okay. Right. To the committee report, we just go around the table. Okay. Johnson, Johnson, we're going to the mall. Yeah, okay. First of all, uh, uh, yes, uh, just one of the small things, first thing. I was uh, called out to the Memorial Stadium on the other day, and the office that Coach Reese was holding, but I think Terry Jackson is holding it now, uh, the roof the cave. Uh, we got a major leak out there to the stadium. I'm uh, trying to get uh, some people from Frazier or Stewart or someone to go give us a bid and find out what's going on out there uh, because it's leaking pretty bad out there and the sheet rocks from the roof from cave in. So we need to get that looked at. Um, also, I just want to thank the council and also uh, uh, I have to say to uh, Mr. Council, uh, Mr. LaShaw, that you really, I, I understand totally what you mentioned about the budget and all of it makes sense, and I know you're all upset when it comes down to employees as well. Um, but, um, you know, right now, young workers have been overworking for the last so many months, almost to a year now. Uh, and I think we, you know, it was time for us to show them some love. It touched my heart when Mark Green came before us and a few other uh, workers came and, and said that. It don't seem like we don't give a hoop about them. Uh, not even stop to offer them a, a bottle of water. Um, but I, I want to shine in with him, but I ain't want to ram this parade at the time because I know uh, I know we have done some stuff in the past. I know with, you know with them because we do care. But anyway, I, I you know I just want to say Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy New Year to you as well. Uh, I know this is the last meeting that we're having uh, at this particular time. Um, uh, it's, 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 it's crime time now because a lot of things going on. I heard they have lost two people in the body. Uh, one person on life support now. I think they're going to pull off tomorrow. Um, uh, Pauline Hyde, daughter. Uh, I understand she's from East um, um, I We don't read this. Yeah, but uh, she's, she's down. She's real sick. And right now, I just want to continue praying for the family. Um, it's, um, uh, Robert Allen, sister. Oh, okay. Uh, so, daughter. Probably. Yeah, daughter, yes. And then I said, please continue on praying for the family. And it's other, I think someone, I think, is way that passed in your neighborhood as well, I understand. Oh, yeah. Miss Blunt. Yeah, Miss Blunt, I understand. Miss Blunt. Yeah, so, yes. but now, it's, you know, we never know yeah. when that when that day going to come. So, we've got to just keep the, the city there everybody in prayer. Again, I just want to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to, to, happy New Year to everybody. And, I'm kind of proud of the, uh, what we did for the workers because I think it was overdue. And good night and thanks, everybody. Thank you, Council. Council, we'll All right, Council, one minute. Yeah, I'm glad. <coughs> I'm, I'm able to help that we were able to help. I'm, I'm glad that we were able to help the workers that we were working on. I'm still very sad that we have some workers laid off and, and yes. the workers we have would not be having to work as hard as they do if, if we had the departments fully staffed. What makes me even sadder and madder is I have people calling and telling me that city workers really don't go back to work. Or there are some city workers who go to work, but they're not allowed to work. But they go to work and they cook and I go out on calls because they're told not to. Um, just all sorts of shenanigans like that. And it's just, a, it's, it's a, you know, it's just cruel to the city, it's cruel to the people. It's, it's just, a, it's just a, not even a cruel to joke, it's a cruel to just whatever. But that's, that's just where we are right now. I'm convinced it's just going to be for a short time, a um, short time longer. I'm also convinced that we are going to get through this because just one or two people can't break Selma. Just like one or two people can't make Selma. It's not Selma's um, bad actors that throw this little thing that's going to. Don't break it. 
But it's the people of Selma who are going to help bring us back. Um, I've noticed that there's not quite so much many man as there has been people being so negative. And for a while there, I was just out and out discouraged because I saw people were doing this just man, man, man. It was almost like they were looking at, at something to nan nan about, looking for something to complain and pick about. Um, I, I think that that people recognize that brighter days are ahead, and I, I think they are. And I, I'm hopeful that people will be coming back to work, and when they do, they'll be ready to do their jobs. I'm excited about our new police chief. I hope that all the people who apply for, for chief will, will go on and, and do, they've all got good jobs, and I hope that they will continue to do their jobs in whatever manner, that they're great people. We could have picked any one of them and would be in good stead. Uh, I hope that the police in Selma will support Granny Brown the Chief like they have said they would. The bad thing about having had a string of bad actors, people become inured to grousing and complaining about the chief. So there's been a lot of uh, habituation about running and complaining about things. So if, if, if hey, if y'all get PO'd about something, don't run complain to us, work it out, live with it or whatever. You got a good chief, have a good attitude, good times are ahead. So with that, I'm gonna say we've got a new good fire chief. We've got a, a new good chief of police. Onward. Onward and upward sell. Good night, Merry Christmas, and happy new year. I, I, I just wanna say something positive and I and I just wanna um, call this young man out. I mean Constantly here on Facebook, he always bringing positive things to sell. And that is Matthew Still. I, I just want to thank you, bro. I mean, you always showing pictures of everything that is going on good in the city of Selma. And we need that. And I, and I appreciate what you do. Well, I thank you. You've changed it. You've changed Facebook. And completely intolerant of anybody who's going to throw anything negative out there. And I appreciate and I love that. that. Right. Right. Because he, he's, if you step up, say something political, or say something on a brighter eyes, and he, he's going to shut you down. Thank you. Good and thing. I really appreciate it. That's, that, that's, that's a product of warning. That's good right. man. Well, <laughs> you too. You go to it, baby. You I'm not going to touch that one. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of good products of warning that I've met anyway. Uh, okay. so, uh, but I do want to. I want to. I want to thank uh, Interim Chief King. Um, you know, he has been called on time yes. and time again to serve the city. I wish he was here. Uh, I just want to thank him. Every well, time he's been called him. on, he stepped up and handled it in a professional mode. He's kept things together. And uh, I, I can't tell you how much it means to have that kind of person in our police department. Uh, what a great guy. And again, what a great effort he's done on behalf of the police department and the, the, the police officers, as well as the city to hold everything together as we, you know, we try to figure out what we're going to do in so many different occasions since I've been elected. Um, uh, the committee report, we're looking at the documents. I've got the, the, a document from the League of Municipalities, and then I got your sample today from uh, Prattville. So between those two documents, we'll have a final document to submit to the attorneys, hopefully, and have something coming in our next council meeting. Um, and again, I want everybody to encourage y'all to check on your neighbors during the holiday season, keep an eye on your neighborhood, make sure you're keeping an eye on, you know, don't put your boxes for your new gifts out in front of your house. Uh, that is, that, you know, uh, you will have little Sam walking down the street with your TV if you do something like that. Or a little John, or a little Mike. So, uh, uh, thank you to all of us for the efforts tonight uh, and the decorum which we approach the situation. We all have our opinions and we're all strong in those opinions and I appreciate us all working together to get these uh, obstacles behind us so we can move forward to a better 2020. And uh, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and thank you again for being here and your support to this long meeting we had tonight. Thank you for all y'all staying around for us for so long. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Bowie. Also, I would like to echo uh, the council members. Thank you for the progress that we have made tonight. Uh, thank you. We are heading in the right direction. But also, if we can remove the daggers the one that wanted up here and also uh, as elected official. Uh, I was reading my, my Bible and my Bible says, you know, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Amen. Just because you may get irate, I'm not going to tear you down, I'm not going to try to destroy you. 
But the one thing about it is we have to be very careful with the way we speak and talk about someone. Because it's life and death in the power of the tongue. And we have greater days ahead of us. But if our attitudes are wrong, and if we are self-serving, some of going to stay in the same place where currently we may not agree with one another at this juncture, but we have to learn to respect one another. One thing I have learned since my tenure up here, uh, we have to replace fear and doubt with faith and courage. And that way we can move out, we can move this city forward. And my charge for the new year is tabula rosé. That's a Latin word for blank slate. So it's important that we start with a blank slate at the beginning of 2020. God bless you. Have a great night. Merry Christmas and wish everyone a happy new year. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, that young man is Raheem, <laughs> Matthew Raheem Smith III. I did recognize you at the beginning of the council meeting. I did tell the council that you are one of the recipients of the highest honors that we give and award for, and that is the Butterfly Award. So um, I, I share the same sentiments that everyone else, and, and I said it all last night, so we do appreciate you. Young people doing big things and, and, and being intolerant of negativity about our Queen City. So thank you again. So now that you're present, I can say it uh, again here. Uh, I do uh, wish that our laid off workers would come on back. Uh, it, it only takes one action to bring them back. I really, really hate that they are still at home. So, so hopefully um, that happens some, at some point soon and other workers will not be overworked. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Maya sent me a text and said that um, they, are, they are still in urgent care and, and John Michael has been diagnosed with the flu and I kind of told her that uh, in fact uh, it would be that, yeah. My grand twins were diagnosed on yesterday, so uh, if, if you got a few more days in school, y'all, you got sick babies, go ahead and leave them at home uh, for the rest of the week. You only have a few days before Christmas break. Uh, kind of do, don't send sick children to school. Um, I got grand twins at home, uh, and now Councilwoman Jackson is about to have a child at home as well. So wash your hands, sanitize, isolate the, the sick children from the well children is, is what I can say is parenting advice. <laughs> and I want to say out there in, um, I don't know if we're in Radio Land tonight, but I know David is recording. Oh, we're, we're, we're. We are, we are. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. President for coming up with the blanket drive. Those will be handed out, I think, at some point uh, before Christmas. Uh, you pick a good entity to pass them out, the Abigail Mission Corps. Uh, who better to pass them out because they see this clientele almost every single day, three times a day. Um, so uh, I was happy to give toward that. Merry Christmas to all of you all out there. The fire calls have gone down. The weather is wicked. Uh, it has changed, so check on three Ps, let me get it right, the pets, the people, and your plants. I think that's correct. So uh, the weather is drastically changed from yesterday. Yesterday we burned up, we were on fire in the Performing Arts Center, like burning up. We had to open the front door. Uh, today, um, close all doors. <laughs> so Merry Christmas out there, Happy Holidays. I know it's rough for some people at this time uh, for whatever reason. Prayers go out to the city of Selma, Alabama. Uh, Selma, there's a good energy out here. There's a good energy. Let's keep this good energy going. Let's pass it on, touch somebody, and let it spread on. I appreciate that energy that we had here tonight. So let's let's keep it moving in that that direction. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Short. The employees. <coughs> City Selma is a major concern of mine. As my colleagues has expressed, it is of theirs. Look at my board of record when it comes to the employees. There will be no doubt where I stand when it comes to the employees. If you recall back last year when the mayor laid out 16 workers, I brought to this council a proposition that we need to make some sacrifices for those same of our salaries, we will give up all of our discretionary, all of our travel and training, which would have brought 44 people back to work to meet it. I always didn't pay it, but that's okay. There were other attempts to gather resources into the area in which will allow the mayor to bring employees back. I have the mayor chosen not to, but the facts still remain. There was an earnest attempt by some of us. My vote no for the one-time raise was not 
not a vote against employees. It was a vote to give them with the councils putting together a budget, a livable wage, where every year they would not have to come with hand in hand, in hand or sitting on the water bench, hoping to bring up this council to vote in the affirmative of giving them a one-time raise. They wouldn't have to do that because this council is now a fixed permanent livable wage to them. My vote against Captain Fulford was not a vote against him. It was a vote against the process. And I do stand by that I think that those three candidates should have been made available to this council to vote on. I don't make no apologies for that. And there's no criticism from my colleagues because they chose to go the other way. They had that right. Some people have the right and there's no word. There's no pushback. Some others have and there's tremendous pushback. <coughs> and once again, that's all right. I'm going to do what I think is right on this council as long as I'm here. I took an oath three years ago that I would do what is in the best interest of the citizens of South Alabama. And I know a lot of decisions that is made have not been <coughs> in an afterthought of this decision, but it was a decision that was made nevertheless. And I think each one of you could make a similar assertion. But the facts still remain. We got an obligation to the citizens of Salem. We got an obligation to afford them the best services that their tax dollars will provide. And we need to do this in concert with the executive branch and all the legislative branch. It is so sad and so unfortunate that there is a disconnect between those two entities. But nevertheless, we do the best we can with what we got. And I think this council has done the average job trying to keep things together. I think they've done an awesome job of trying to work cohesively with each other. Although there have been times where there have been disagreement, some have been received respectfully, others have not. But yet it's still only you can account for yourself. I don't understand one thing that I have no control over nothing. Nobody but me. And I mean it depends on my safety because I'm a true believer that God is in charge. What we do? It may not seem like in the beginning, but I truly believe by and by he will make it right. I want to ask my citizens of the to listen to the audience to be very careful out there during the Yule time season. This is when, for whatever reason, crime seemed to be elevated. I was so glad that an 80 year old lady that was accosted over in Montgomery that the perpetrator was apprehended, and they could be brought to justice. Because what happened to that 80-year-old lady should not happen to nobody. I just thank God she wasn't physically hurt, and I just pray that she heal well, and I pray for the perpetrator to learn from their crimes, because in America, crime don't pay. I think it's an opportunity to wish the missing audience a very, very, very Christmas. Remember, this is the season for Jesus, and not you. It's not your birthday. So we give gifts to those people in the name of Jesus. That's right. Good night. Thank you, Councilman Ashore. Before I go to Councilwoman uh, Thomas, I received an email from uh, Chief King asking uh, us to keep Sergeant Ray Blanks in our prayers. His mother in law died, Mr. Leonard Smith of Crackville uh, died on December 10th. Right. Councilwoman, Thomas. I would like to say this tonight to the citizen of the city of Selma. I would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Also, we go through the time of bereavement and uh, the illness and, and the, the family members of the city of Selma. In my ward, I lost of a long time uh, constituent, Mrs. Moore, Anthony Moore, and uh, mother that lives in my ward had been here in our neighborhood a long time, and she has taken a great part of our community, uh, things moving forward in our ward. And I want you to, to family members to, to know that we have we are deeply in our condolence to the loss. Also, we have a lot of people that are ill right now, dealing with cancer and other health problems. So, you know, this time of year, all the loved ones, we just, 
put you in our prayers and pray that God bless you through this journey that uh, we are going through right now with some of our loved ones. Also, I want to thank, uh, you know, I want to say to the workers, the public workers that work for the city, you know, as, as a leadership, uh, we can vote all day to bring you back, but uh, it's not our call. This is, this is on the day-to-day -day operation, and we've been speaking about bringing you back, and people have to understand that we're not the one that can bring you back. We can vote all day. The mayor is our, the chief executive of the city of Selma. The six-day workers, I, am, uh, I believe and firm, I fight for workers all my life, and believe in uh, what's due to them and what they need. And uh, I hate that, uh, we have to start off 2020 that uh, this six day workers was out of job. They lost everything, health insurance, benefits. And it's like, uh, <coughs> you got to start all over. Some people found jobs, some have them. Some are up in ages, they, uh, they still need extra because the health insurance is, they lost their health insurance. And uh, this is something that uh, I pray on all the time that these six day workers will be able to be blessed to have another job or be able to start back here in the city. And I just want to say to everyone that uh, this is the time of giving. We all know we have homeless people out there. It's cold out there tonight, and uh, we see a lot of people, uh, they, they're staying in abandoned houses in our community, and uh, we're asking them, you know, people, if you see someone and, and they are out there, you know, let's let's show some love, even if we give them a blanket or something. Because we do, we all have in our district that we have where well, homeless people are staying in abandoned houses, trying to keep warm. Some of them are trying to start a fire to keep warm. But maybe one day the Lord will bless this city that we'll be able to have somewhere for the homeless people to stay. So I just say this to everyone, Merry Christmas. And uh, this is the season to give. Show some love to someone in all over the city. All right. Do I have a motion? So move. Second.